The South needs England, and England needs the South. They will drive their strategy toward the back country. Into this frontier, the British send one of their most effective and ambitious officers, Colonel Bannister Tarleton. He is destined to become a household name in the South, only it will not be for bravery, but for brutality. Tarleton is known for his daring, for moving his cavalry quickly, and the troops, quick hits. He's also known for just, for no restraint. He's a little bit of a dandy, which was appropriate for that era, but he fights like a Tasmanian devil. The British will not only raise and train a loyalist militia to keep peace in the South, they will hunt down rebels and destroy them. No one is better suited to that task than Tarleton. 100 miles from the coast, he closes in on the remains of the Continental Army in retreat from their defeat at Charleston. With great speed and agility, Tarleton's British cavalry catches up to a regiment of 350 Continentals under the command of Colonel Abraham Buford. He pursues them to a town called Waxhaws. Tarleton sends Buford a deadly threat. You are now encompassed by a corps of 700 light troops on horseback. Half of that number are light infantry with cannon, the rest cavalry. Bannister Tarleton, British officer. It's a bluff. Tarleton has no more than 200 men. But they are his best soldiers, well trained in the bayonet and saber. Buford, sure that he has the greater numbers, doesn't back down. Sir? I reject your proposals. I shall defend myself until the last extremity. Colonel Abraham Buford. Fire! Buford's words will prove prophetic. The Americans are able to fire just a few volleys before they are overrun. But Tarleton doesn't stop there. As the rebels raise the white flag of surrender, he continues a ferocious attack, cutting down enemy soldiers, even as they lay down their arms. It will soon be remembered as the Waxhaws Massacre. Our captain attempted to defend his head with his left arm until the arm was hacked off. His head was then laid open to the eyes. Continental Soldier. Waxhaws is a painful loss for the Americans. But they will turn their defeat into another kind of victory on the propaganda front. The Battle of the Waxhaws is used by patriot propagandists to depict the British as monsters who will massacre their soldiers in a dishonorable fashion and ride roughshod over the countryside. Any occupying force trying to subdue a rebellion on the home soil of an insurgency is going to operate at a disadvantage when it comes to the propaganda war. Waxhaws will be remembered and used as a battle cry against the British. It sets the tone for the divisive war coming in the backcountry. Bannister Tarleton receives a reprimand from his superiors, but they do little else to rein him in. The man now known as Bloody Ban continues deeper into the backcountry where the British are about to dig themselves an even bigger hole. 